We are not responsible for your behaviour. We believe in common sense. No, 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 no crisis, no. You're listening to News Talk on Strange But True Radio, episode 31 of 2022 with Philip Jones and Philip Keeler. On tonight's show, a migrant crisis in the UK. Plus, we'll be asking, has former British House Secretary and bum squeezer Matt Hancock lost his mind? Well, the answer is um, most likely. Uh, We are downloadable from wherever you get your podcasts, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify and Amazon Music. All that to come, but first, here's what's trending around the world. In the US, President Joe Biden has warned any candidates who refuse to accept defeat in next week's midterm elections could set the nation on the path to chaos. He urged civilians to unite in opposition to political violence in the vote on the 8th of November. To Brazil now, President Bolsonaro has appealed to truckers protesting against Sunday's election results to clear the roads and protest elsewhere. Supporters of the far-right president have put up hundreds of roadblocks across the country since it was announced that Mr Bolsonaro's left-wing rival Lula won the election. In India, air quality in the capital Delhi has plunged to hazardous levels. Members of the Am Amidi Party, AAP as it's known, which governs Delhi, say that the federal government has rejected its solution to sort the problem out. The government are blaming AAP for turning Delhi into what they say is a gas chamber, which is now classed as one of the world's most polluted cities. And in Mexico, people have been taking part in the annual Day of the Dead festival, during which they celebrate the lives of the departed. The festival is a pre-Hispanic tradition in which families remember their dead and celebrate the continuity of life. To our top story then, in the UK, a migrant crisis is causing overcrowding and third world conditions in an immigration centre in Kent. Manston Processing Centre, designed for 1,600 people, has a shocking 4,000 people living on its site. Pressure's mounting on the Tory government to do more now, but since they came to power, nothing's really been done about the migrant crisis, which seems to be getting worse day on day. Um, Phil, we have to stop these illegal immigrants coming over on our own boats from France, don't we? France is a safe country. Uh, then we have to open a safe way to Britain. That's the only solution. So close the borders, basically. Well, what you could do is you can think outside the box somewhat, which is, I'm afraid, difficult for MPs. (laughs) What they could do is they could set up an immigration centre for the UK in France. Yeah. So if someone wanted to come to France, they could just make their application for asylum in England there. Okay. If they negotiate with the French, then then they don't have to pay ten thousand quid to get to the illegal traffickers. The illegal traffickers get out of business, and um then it solves a massive problem. It's very, very easy. I'm surprised no one's thought of that before. Somebody, I can't remember which politician, was suggesting on the TV last night that um, we should put people on a big cruise liner in the middle of the ocean. I can't can't imagine that. Why don't they just build a holding centre in France? It's easy. Just knock on the door, give you, have your stuff ready, whatever, have some criteria by which you can enter, mm. go on, 
go in, walk in. Well, no criteria. Doesn't just that walk just in move, and make an application? Doesn't that just move the problem instead of to Manston? It will just move the problem to say Calais. Well, yeah, but they're not in England, are they? But so it's they're not already a... in France. Yeah. You're saying the problem is there are people. The problem is right twofold. One, people are coming over to England illegally as they put it mm. where it's actually legal if you are an asylum seeker yeah. number one so they don't want people to do that because um it causes problems and it's causing congestion because as soon as they get to kent they get arrested or they get detained let's put it that way yeah. and they get put in a holding center and when they cross the channel they um are risking their lives in boats and a lot of them drown a lot of them have died in the past and that needs to be stopped so we don't have to patrol the channels but we so basically the idea would be that you create a holding center in france right so that rather than risk their lives going across the ocean or the channel or wherever they however they want to enter they can just go into a holding center in france and if they fit the criteria then they have to be allowed into england and we can ferry them over mm. I mean, if you got really, com really not uh, commercial about it, they, you could charge them an entry fee into the place so that it was to say it was a thousand pounds. Say, yeah. if they're paying ten thousand pounds to the traffickers, if they paid a thousand pounds to the UK to be to be a, to into a holding area, mm. that would be cheap. A lot that would save them nine thousand quid. However. Mm that's we shouldn't really do that there shouldn't be any money involved no, at all we no. should just say do you want to if you want to come to england you need to full comply with certain criteria and we we have to allow people in as asylum seekers although a lot of fascists say we shouldn't uh, because we're already overcrowded um but I think basically we should we should we should have a holding centre. Rather have the holding centre in Kent, have a holding centre in France. Britain pay contribute towards that holding centre. So solves a massive problem. But nobody's ever thought of that. Mm. What they're doing is they're saying the government was saying right. What we'll do is although it hasn't happened thankfully, um, they're saying right. If you are an asylum seeker and you get to England, we're going to send you to Rwanda. Well, why go to all that bother? You know, yeah, yeah. But just have a holding centre in France. If you make your application to live in England in France, and if you pass all the tests, then you can come and live in England. Yeah, that's it. We've got to pay our share. We're making billions of pounds out of feeding the Saudis with aircraft and training pilots in Saudi Arabia to bomb Syria. Yeah. And so the people are fleeing from a war created by, by us. If nobody supplies any arms, we don't have any wars. I don't if they think... just stopped all arms, if yeah. they got rid of all arms, there wouldn't be any wars. Yeah. I don't and think we're making um... billions by supplying the Saudis with arms to bomb Syria and the people in Syria are fleeing the war in Syria created by our arms. The whole, the whole um, putting asylum seekers on planes to go to Rwanda, I don't actually think there's been a single person Not uh, one, no. sent over there. And they've, they've built all these facilities over there, which is a bit mad, costing millions and millions, probably. Um, I, yeah. I, 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 do, do we th I, I think I, I get the impression that they will be scrapping that soon. I just get that impression from because you don't really hear about it. No, because the government won't want to say they're doing another U-turn. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sunak's already done a major U-turn by saying he wasn't going to the climate conference, which shows a lack of judgment. He should go. Why would he say that? Why It's such an obvious thing that he must go to. Yeah. Why did he even contemplate not going? Yeah. And he didn't even say he was sending a representative. He said Boris Johnson was going, just, but just Boris Johnson was going. He didn't say, I can send my foreign secretary no. in my place yeah. if he really didn't want to go. I think he, I think he'll miss his Star Wars toys if he's <laughs> in. But they could, they could take it. He could take his little toys with him yeah. if he went to the th climate conference, couldn't he? He could take a, a little collection with him. Made of plastic, the climate change people wouldn't like that. But at least, uh, you know, they stay in your desk. And no, I think that's a fair point. Yeah. I mean, he's contributing to the problem by collecting Star Wars toys. <laughs> I thought it was quite that's interesting. That's how low I, he's gone. I watched an interview with uh, with uh, 
uh, Boris Johnson um, the other day on 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 our uh, news channel Sky News, and it was quite an interesting one. It was talking about him uh, going to COP uh, whatever it is the the climate change yeah. conference. Can't remember what number it is. They now. call it COP twenty two. Twenty two or something like that. Yeah, it probably yeah. is. Yeah. So that he was saying how important it was. Couldn't understand why Rishi Sunak wasn't going, and then it was announced that uh, Rishi Sunak is going. I wonder if Charles. Our King Charles III has uh, has anything to do with that because he's um, a big believer in in the climate and getting it right for for people around the world. He wanted to go to that. He was told by um, um, uh, da, 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 he was told by one of our Liz partners, Truss, Liz Truss. Mob. There's been so many um, that uh, he wasn't allowed to wasn't allowed to go. I think they should let him go. So do I. But they'll say it's too political for him to allow, for him to be involved. But why can't he go? But He's so what? So what? Don't yeah. you know? I don't give a shit. You know, too political. I, I I don't understand why why they're not allowed to have a voice. Well, they're not allowed to get in politics, involved in politics, because they're otherwise we're moving to war. It's very difficult for me to explain that. Are we going towards a sort of republic. They're not, they don't have any power republic. because we're a democracy. So okay. if we if we were if we if we're a democracy, so the way our our laws are created, they're by a democratic election. Well, supposedly democratic election, as if you want to call it that. Mm. And so the king has no no influence in the political world directly, only indirectly. Yeah. So, you know, they're just a figurehead for the country. And as such, I mean, they, it defeats its own argument because if they're just a figurehead for the country, why can't they just be a figurehead for Britain saying, we're going, I'm here yeah. as a represent, to represent Britain, and I, I'm just here. And the, the royal family are very, very... Um, good at speaking in political in very neutral terms so he wouldn't have to get involved in any laws or regulations like that he could just because the king's very skilled mm. and you could he could just go and represent the UK and there's no reason for that yeah. it's probably the interpretation of the rules which says that the, he's not allowed to be involved in politics in any way shape or form so for example my the letter from um the, the queen that I've got, because we were pen pals before she sadly passed away. Um, she meant what she, the, the language she uses is totally neutral mm. because there was a potential military coup when I was there. Yeah. Um, it was very frightening. And um, all the people there said they were happier with a sovereign having this queen there. And when she wrote to me and I said, so I wrote to the queen and said, the people were very happy we were much happier when you were the queen of uh, British Guyana up until 1966, which is a long time ago. They, was, they still missed her because they liked the solidarity that she gave. Yeah. And and she wasn't able to say oh, anything about the political environment, but she did say that she was very happy that the people of Guyana looked upon her reign with um, something, uh, fondness and affection, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Nostalgia and affection, something like that. Yeah. So... In that sense, I don't see why the king can't go, but a lot of people have a great deal of difficulty interpreting in the English language, mm. including politicians, because I'm not a great fan of politicians, really. No, I know. Because I yeah. think to um, they act, in my opinion, they're retarded. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them, nearly all of them, include Starmer's got problems as well. I mean, it, nobody's free of this mantle which they carry on their shoulders, which means that they can't say anything just for the sake of saying it. They have to say something with the idea of getting more votes. What they fail to realise is that system is so screwed now yeah. that if they just said were truthful and honest about what was going on, people would respect that so much. i got to say, Starmer, absolutely... Absolutely uh -huh. slaughtered. Starmer absolutely slaughtered uh, Sunak in uh, PMQs on Wednesday uh, this week, um, talking about the migrant crisis and how the Tories have done nothing really to to allay uh, problems with, with with the amount of people coming over. Um, and uh, uh, Starmer couldn't really say anything because, you know, Conservatives You mean have been... Sunak couldn't say anything? Yeah. Sunak couldn't say anything because it is down to the Conservatives because they've been in power the longest now, not Labour. Yeah. It's it's down to the Conservatives with these 
rather strange views on, you know, Brexit probably didn't help it. Lots of things haven't helped it. And now you've got a culmination of over 4,000 people in tiny Manston when it should only be fit for 1,600. Yeah, I mean, the Tories, since, well, the Tories created Brexit, it's their fault. They've created this mess. Apparently, the surveys now say 80% of us want to return to the European Union. Mm. There were checks and balances in law which specify how such a thing, how the constitution should be changed. All of those are ignored, but that's another subject. So we, you still have Tory party members saying they're out to get us. They're after us, the European Union. It's completely the opposite. The European Union want to work with us. They want to improve relations. You've got idiots like Liz. I mean, talk about idiotic. Liz Truss said, they said, and um, she she said the jury's out as to whether we're friends with um, so with, uh, with 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 the French or not, yeah. you know? Stupid but they're our say. greatest allies in all, many things. Yeah. What was she thinking of? And why are the Tories saying, oh, they're out to get us? No, they're not. They want to work with us. They'd like to improve relations. But the Tories couldn't see that because as far as I'm concerned, they are, they are retarded. Yeah. Their job is to negotiate with the European Union to improve matters, not to walk around saying, oh, they're out to get us when they're not. Yeah. The European, the members of the European Union said bef- during Brexit, we effectively, they feel sorry for the... Uh, people of Great Britain because the people of get Great Britain are getting misguided by the politicians so mm. it just goes to show what we're told by the politicians and the truth are two different things two different things altogether one quest- question one question one quest final question uh, Phil uh-huh. who's your favourite Tory Conservative Prime Minister I think you can put that question somewhere where the sun don't shine yeah, 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 yeah. Let me say, oh, yeah, yeah. Let me say, oh, 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 yeah. Tu lado mío Y yo de testigo Vamos un, dos, tres Sin estrés Muéstrame sus pasos Te cuento hasta diez y ven Yo sé que tú quieres Moverlo sin pena Ven Sin estrés Muéstrame sus pasos Te cuento hasta diez y ven Yo sé que tú quieres Sé que tú quieres conmigo Amor de todos esos placeres Y te vi mami, bailabas como un ángel, me acuerdo de ese party No lo hacías despacito, no eras como Dari, eras como Badoni, tu flow bastante cari, alright Hermoso y con timidez me gusta Y con esa sencillez que asusta Sabes bien cómo es que es combi completa de cabeza a los pies Sin effects mami yo te no Te subo el pichito y te rito el cono En mis historias siempre te menciono Pa' esa reina necesito un trono Sin effects mami yo te entono Con esos besos chica me emociono Con tu cuerpo y tu nivel quieres otra vez Sé que tú quieres conmigo amor Todos esos placeres que brindan la vida Y que nos hace tan feliz Sé que tú quieres conmigo amor de Todos esos placeres Como acariciarte y conocerte de raíz Vamos un, dos, tres, sin estrés Muéstrame sus pasos, te cuento hasta diez y ven Yo sé que tú quieres Moverlo sin pena, ven Sin estrés Muéstrame sus pasos, te cuento hasta diez y ven Yo sé que tú quieres Sé que tú quieres conmigo, amor
Now, um, Elon Musk has uh, bought Twitter, hasn't he, in the last week or so? Yeah, I mean, he did try and get out of that because he, he thought it was uh, a bit of a rotten apple, I think. But uh, anyway, he has bought it this week uh, amongst a lot of contention from people. And, and he wants to charge as all eight dollars for the privilege of using twitter what are your thoughts email us studio at strange but true radio.com well then in australia i'm a celebrity get me out of here is getting underway this week uh, matt hancock he is of course the Ex British Health Secretary, uh, he'll be joining the camp, and uh, highly anticipated, uh, will be voted for every Bush Tucker trial. Uh, I will particularly myself like uh, to be watching him eating kangaroo bollocks every night. I, I mean, I will be voting him in for the Bush Tucker trial. My phone bill could go absolutely massive. I might need some listeners to help me with my bills. Um, He's already had the whip taken off him, has uh, Mr. Hancock, for spending 12 weeks in the jungle. I mean, he might be voted out before that. He probably will be. But, you know, general public might keep him in to do every Bush Tucker trial. Um, He should really be in his constituency helping the public that voted him into power uh, wherever he presides. Um, Phil, has do you think Matt Hancock, has he... Has he lost his mind? Um, I don't think he... Well, no, he's just a... He's, I think he's quite um, an unpleasant <laughs> character. I think he's an unpleasant character. I think everything he does is for personal gain. Yeah. He must be some form of narcissist to behave in the way that he does. Um, and he's doing this because he says he wants to draw attention to his campaign for dyslexia because he doesn't want any child to leave school not knowing that they've got dyslexia well no, he doesn't that's already happened he the just horse wants, has already bolted he wants to get his public profile better amongst yeah, but the he's general saying public he's, yeah he's saying he wants to campaign for his dyslexia <laughs> campaign he wants to campaign for his dyslexia campaign good on him so because but everybody knows about dyslexia now so the horse has already bolted yeah you know if that if if he's so out of touch in that regard well mr hancock what's he doing as i an will MP? personally enjoy watching you eat kangaroo bollocks um and kangaroo asses whatever they have um which he grubs um they call it they what Cow I think penis. What, somebody's be quoted Dave Penman, General Secretary of the FDA Union, which represents senior civil servants, said um, to have to decide where you can have a job where you can have to where you have to decide for yourself. You're taking a month off, abandon your work and responsibilities, get paid shed loads, and face little consequence. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be an inspiration to other public services. He can just leave, get paid a shed load of money. Yeah. And then come home again. He doesn't think he's going to get elected again anyway, and hopefully he won't be. I mean, he was on that show they have on After Question Time a couple of weeks ago, and they, all all the reporters, all of the BBC reporters, are sitting there with their trendy headphones, <laughs> and they're all sitting there thinking, "Aren't they? Aren't we cool? We're discussing political matters on the t- on TV, you know." And they had Matt, ha- Matt Hancock on there, yeah. and someone asked Matt Hancock a question, and Matt Hancock just started using a series of long words that made no sense at all. Honestly, he was talking absolute rubbish, <laughs> but he was using long words so convincing people that he knew what he was talking about yeah. and um, all the BBC reporters were sitting there knowingly nodding their heads as though they understood what he was talking about well he didn't understand what he was talking about it was absolute gobbledygook yeah. this is what they do and he's a wor- one of the worst people at doing this this is also the bloke who was um, in breach of uh, COVID regulations for um, having relations with a young woman in his office and she had a family he had a family and they managed to break up two families mm. during covid well done matt and you're so you're a harbinger of moral values are mm. you i don't think so people in public office shouldn't be behaving like that i mean people forget that you know in the 1930s pure merely because 
uh, the king was marrying a divorcee, he had to abdicate. Yeah. Now we have a divor uh, a king who is a divorcee, so the moral compass has changed. Yeah. Which is not a good thing; it's a bad thing. Yeah, I don't think there's much moral compass in in business and and politics uh, these days. From what, you know, what I've what I've witnessed. Uh, he well, there used to be. be. Go, there used to be years and years ago when they set up when London started to make a lot of money through re through insurance and reinsurance. There were many institutions set up, charitable institutions mm. set up by insurance companies because they were making so much money, and they and they still have them. They still exist now. Yeah, these charitable institutions be, where people are using their um, their profits to help other people. So the charitable organisations, we have a historic history of being charitable towards the poor. We, and we have someone called Robin Hood as well. We have a great story about Robin Hood. People should, you know, he was looked as a hero of our society and we should look to those values again, as far as I'm concerned. We really should because without moral structure, society deteriorates and falls apart. From from a show sadly, producer, sadly, this is being fed. Sorry, sorry. I was going to say from a show producer uh, sort of view. From from I'm a celebrity producers, he is going to be seen as quite a lively character. I should imagine there's people in in the jungle with him who who will give him give him a lot of uh, grief for what the Tory Party have done. It specifically him himself, which it will make good what good TV. Yeah. But um, also, I mean, he'll be doing the bush truck. I think people will be voting him in for the bush tucker trial, and he'll realise quite how people, how many people dislike him. Hopefully, so you're going away. Um, I was going to say into a jungle, but you said to me off air that it's a desert. Yeah, I'm going to the Baja Desert. Yeah, in Mexico. Okay. A long, long time ago, I drove to Ensenada in Baja, California. So Baja, California is a peninsula south of California. It's in Mexico. You cross the border into Tia, at Tijuana probably, go down, and then you drive down, and they have a desert car a race, a race, a car race across the desert. Wow. And they had that um, when I was 19, when I drove there, we got to Ensenada, and they said, you should have got here a week ago because uh, the Baja 500 – race came through our town i went what wow. i missed the baja 500 that's terrible so the baja 500 is now the baja 1000 wow. it's more professional than it was then and it ends in a place called la paz in the baja peninsula on the 20th of november why have they increased year. the numbers is that because it was 500 years ago and you're it's 500 miles oh okay this is a thousand miles now. Oh, right. Because the machines of the technology, they can, you know. Change. So over 20 years ago, I was there. So, well over 20 years ago. Hang on and a minute. So I have heard of this. I'm so going Are back. they using local roads to race on? Through the, it's through the desert, mainly. Yeah. Okay. I imagine some parts of it are on local roads, but I'm not sh not certain. Wow. Anyway, it's, a des it's through the desert. So I'm going, after all these years, I'm going back to see the end of the race that I missed all those years ago. Nice. And I'm going to, so I'm going to Mexico for a, for a while with a friend in an, R, in an RV. So she's in, she's waiting for me in Los Angeles with an RV that's ready to go. So when we get to the, get when I get to LAX next week, we're, I'm basically, we're just driving straight off into the sunset. Great. Which is absolutely fantastic. I'm so excited. It's going to be such a great trip. That does sound like a, like a lot of fun. And uh, I, I wish you well. We're going to actually be broadcasting still uh, with you at these different locations. So you're going to be in California first for a few weeks. And then... No. Oh, after... I'm not going to... I'm going to be... Bar, it's Baja, California. It's actually in Mexico. Okay. It's Baja means lower in Spanish, so it's Lower California. Ah. It's the board, you know. Yeah. It's it's actually in. Then I'm going back to Los Angeles, and then I'm going to see my family, who live south of San Francisco and Lovely. in San Francisco. Lovely. Okay. So I have cousins there. So we've got to change in time for our show. We normally broadcast this on a, a Saturday. We're upload it on a Saturday each week. Um. So because of the time differences and everything we're going to be yeah. um we're going to be broadcast well we're going to be recording the show from about four o'clock uk time as soon as it's done we'll be uploading so the upload 
should be on on air on on all the podcasts and everything from about eight o'clock each night on a Monday UK time. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what we're going to be doing. And then after that, when I've visited my family, I'm going to Peru. Nice. So we'll be broadcasting from Peru as well. Do they have internet, yeah. and Wi-Fi, and everything? Yeah, yeah. Wow. We'll have some kind of Wi-Fi we can connect to. It won't be so easy because I'll be in the mountains at about three and a half thousand meters above sea level. Okay, this is what I'd like. What I'd like is to have you on top of a mountain with a microphone and uh, see because we 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 unfortunately have to see each other via video screen to just to make sure we know we're ugly. Uh, and and we do the show that way. I, w- I want I want to see you on top of a mountain, and then I'll put pictures up everywhere on on Twitter. Um, that's if Elon Musk hasn't started charging us eight dollars uh, a tweet by then. It won't be eight dollars a tweet, will it? It'll be eight dollars for the, to be a member. Yeah. Eight dollars a month. A month is it? Yeah. Will you pay that? I don't use Twitter. You do. I've got you on Twitter. Yeah, but I never brought. I never. I never write anything. Okay. Well, very, very rarely. Okay. I haven't written anything on Twitter for years. Mm. I think we I can't w- be asked. What's the point? It's I all this social Twitter. media. It's no. It's, it doesn't work. It's, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> That's it for this edition of Strange but True Radio uh, for a mixed-up generation. Uh, we are broadcast every Monday evening now i have had to change it sorry i was going to say saturday broadcasting every monday now and the download time is eight o'clock from me philip keeler and phil james have a great week We are not responsible for your behaviour. We believe in common sense. If we didn't have Brexit now, our problems wouldn't be half as bad. But no politician is prepared to admit that. No, 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 no crisis, no.